From the Woodshed, a casual conversation with Chase Morrill and Ryan Eldridge from Kennebec Cabin Company, the team that inspired the hit show Main Cabin Masters. From the Woodshed is brought to you by Nelma. See the stamp, trust the quality. By Hero Media Arts, connecting small business with new customers. And by Hammond Lumber, your building project partner. Now, from the Woodshed Studios at KCC Headquarters in Manchester, Maine, it's Chase and Ryan. Woodshed, I'm Chase Morrill. With me as always, Ryan Eldridge and Maggie Morrill. Hello. Hi, everybody. Our guest today is Alex Dara, the sales manager from Durgan & Kroll Lumber Company. And we'll be speaking with him a little bit later. But first, you can find us at KennebecCabinCompany.com, MainCabinMasters.com, our Facebook, Instagram, YouTube channel, and check out our online store at shop.KennebecCabinCompany.com. And we always want to thank our sponsors, Hammond Lumber Company, the official building material supplier of Kennebec Cabin Company, Nelma, Northeast Lumber Manufacturing Association, Hero Media Network, and Kennebec Savings Bank. You're already better than last week. <laughs> Two weeks in. <laughs> it's like second nature. And there's now. more places to find us now. Well, not really, but down the road, we're hiding out a little bit. Yeah. It just keeps getting bigger and bigger. Yes. We are, you know, we're growing. Well, we no. We've always needed a construction space. Yes, we're organizing. We've always said that. We've always known it. It hasn't always been a possibility, but we've got one now. Yeah, down Mon Monmouth, Maine. Two towns down. Yeah, Monmouth, Maine. Nine miles down, 202. Yeah. So Ten minutes away. It's a... Don't start coming there yet. We're not open to the public. <laughs> <laughs> although, although I did sell a utility knife today. Some random guy... That's the first sale? He walked in. He's like, hey, it was a Lutz 528 or some specific utility knife. He's like, is that a... He must, he must have known it was there. And he wanted it. He wanted it. Did you put the dollar, first dollar bill up on the wall? No, I spent it. <laughs> it's my man. On some material, on some supplies for Doug. <laughs> but yes. <laughs> <laughs> but he really wanted this specific oh, Lux exciting. utility knife. That's the goal someday to have some retail there. Some and he type. paid you for it. Yeah. yeah. Just, I mean, it was it was brand new. Like never used. Did you just make up a price? I mean, I had a sticker on it. <laughs> Everything's got a price on it. I don't know about this business strategy. <laughs> it, was, you... it wasn't a business strategy. He totally just walked in, just started talking to me. Didn't know who I was. And then you were like, yeah, that'll be $45, please. Oh, I was like, you got five bucks? <laughs> you probably did. If you didn't add the sales tax, that's illegal, right, Maggie? Sure. <laughs> I mean, Have you been there yet? I have. What did you think? It's pretty creepy. So if anyone doesn't been. know, we, we... I think we, there's rats, and I'm scared of the rats. Uh, no comment. Seems like there's a place that there's rats. And it if there's me. no food, they don't really want to live there. Yeah, but I, in those dark corners, I'm a little or bit heat. scared. Or heat. They like food and heat. We don't have either. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little bit scared. But if anyone's wondering, we picked up no, the old Nose Lumber Company mm -hmm. in yep. Monmouth, Maine. It's huge. Yep. It's, yeah. been, it's been around for since the 50s. Yeah, those pictures you're showing me, they were really cool. Yeah. It's, it's perfect for us. It's no longer a lumber yard, but it's got plenty of storage, plenty of room to expand, plenty of storage. And it needs plenty of work. <laughs> and it needs plenty of work. So it's right up our alley. It's almost over. I get over in there, I'm overwhelmed. So I'm, I'm really trying really not to just do anything without, you know, because you don't want to do something twice. There's right, so much right, stuff right. you could pick something up, put it over there, do this, do that. So it's trying to get a strategy. Yeah. it's. But you kind of start at the front. Yeah. And work your way. Yeah. A little bit each time. And it'll be nice just to kind of consolidate everything, a place to, you know, store materials, tools, equipment, vehicles. So awesome. Yeah. So, you know, right now we're pretty spread out between my barn, your place. There's stuff everywhere. So. I I've been beelining stuff over there. You know how we see the I am. <laughs> <laughs> then I was thinking your house probably move it when it goes to a job and then bring it there. So nothing just goes back to your house, like all that stage. Exactly. Exactly. Just slowly. It was so nice though, putting the different pipe stage in rows and like four foot here, five foot there. Like my OCD, she's my way. Yeah. <laughs> my OCD can come out. It's going to make us efficiency as money, Maggie. It all goes in your pocket someday. Your, <laughs> or your kid's pocket. Who knows? I don't think that's true. Somebody's. Yeah. We got some sad news today. Oh, yeah. yeah I, heard, I heard you texted Mimi. I did. Te me and you texted Mimi. Why is this a podcast I mean, topic? It's, it's topic. Mimi Peggy had to put Kermit down today. Aww. Yep. He was he had a good life. Yep. He yeah. He had a good life. He was what, fourteen or fifteen? Wow. Four, I don't know. He didn't act his age and just because I saw him a couple weeks ago and he was 
Same old Kermit yep. bounding around. Yeah. So yeah. So I know. Can you guys tell us what Kermit was? Kermit was me uh my mother in law's dog, Chase's mom. He was a golden doodle. And my dog in law. He got his name because Sarah and I wanted to name oh my God, he's we didn't know if Nori was gonna be a boy or a girl. We didn't want to find out. And so if Nori had been a boy, she would have been Kermit. Yeah. The worst decision they almost made. So instead <laughs> she's, Poor Nori. Instead she's Eleanor. So my mother and we still like She'd been an awesome Kermit though. She decided to name her dog Kermit so we wouldn't be able to use it to name one of our kids Kermit. Beat it to the punch. And then Sarah's parents sent her a thank you letter. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. <laughs> so now I guess Kermit's up for grabs again. There you go. <laughs> well, I know Ash and I are taking it, so <laughs> somebody else can. Yeah. That's always a sad day. What did I say today? It's, you know, you don't choose to put your kids down. So like, right, 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 right. It's probably one of the hardest things you'll ever do. It's true. Yes. Yes, it's not, not nothing fun about it. No. Anyways, on a bit more excited yeah. stuff. But we love you, Kermit. Yeah, we need some snow. So true. It is like, I, you've been doing dry land training. You haven't been on a ski hill yet. Nope. When's your first um, ski meet scheduled? For um, ski, supposedly, we're supposed to have a race on the 22nd. Maggie decided. made the KJ. I saw, I read her name. Skiers to watch. Yeah. Nice. Um, we tried to, we were going to maybe go this weekend, but that's a no go. Cause it's just supposed to be kind of gross. I saw a picture of one of the local skiers. I want to throw him on the bus, but it was like quad brown. Yeah. It's not their fault. It's, it's no, 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 no. If it's on, if it doesn't get below 30 at night, there's nothing you can do. Yeah. We were just talking to those, that couple from up North and they said snow there too. It's just, no snow in Myers Hill. Mm. If there's no snow in Myers Hill, there's no snow in Monmouth, Maine <laughs> at all. No, not at all. Well, let's take a little break here and uh, watch this video about for my friends from Nelma for about Eastern White Pine, and we'll come back with our new guest, Alex Dara. Oh, what a feeling! Putting pine on the ceiling. We really burned through this pile. That was over four thousand lineal feet of Eastern White Pine. Yeah, I mean, this it's such a versatile wood. I mean, we've used it for the ceiling with whitewash. We did the center bead with wainscoting. v mats for sheathing. Yeah. We'll, we'll rip up whatever's left for trim. We'll use it for flooring, siding. You know, where else can you get three different uses out of one board or four different uses, you know? I mean, yeah, this is perfect. It, this is one, one small product, but we've been able to use it in so many different ways. It's really a versatile wood. And it's all sourced from Maine and New England. And yeah. Eastern white pine. Sustainably harvested. We like to say throw the pine at it. We do that a lot. So now it's throw the eastern white pine at it. Trademark pending. Trademark pending. <laughs> throw it. Thanks, Nelma. All right. And we are back with our guest, Alex Dara from Durgan and Kroll. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Thanks for being here. How's it going? It's going great. I got a big question for you. Would you like water, coffee, or beer? Uh, definitely beer. Perfect. Today's beer. We don't have a beer sponsor, so it's always just a, it's a guess, but we're going with Baxter <laughs> today, so who knows? Sounds great. And this is not from last season. Good. good. Fresh. Do you have a preference? I don't. Whatever you got there is fine. Oh, the uh, hazy, hazy pale ale. That sounds Ooh. great. Blue, yellow, or purple. And you get a complimentary glass. I used to be a bartender, if you didn't know. I used to be in the beer business before the lumber business. Oh, so. really? With who? Uh, I was, it was a distributor. Nice. Yeah. Cheers. How long have you been in the lumber business? Uh, it'll be 11 years this this spring. Wow. Yeah. You like it? I love it. Yeah, it's a great industry. So it's Durgan and it's Kroll. Durgan and Kroll. Okay. Yes. And where are they out of? We're in Eastern White Pine Sawmill. Um, we're strictly a four-quarter mill, so just making the one-inch paneling that you use there for exterior siding, your ship laps, your yeah. grooves, your... Um, and we're in New London, New Hampshire. Um, we're a relatively large mill for first state of New Hampshire, producing about 34 million feet a year. Wow. Yeah. Nice. And how long has it, have they been there, do you say? You know, we've been there since 1976. That's which, relatively new for- Exactly. A you know, that size, it, right. We're still kind of the new guys on the block, you know, especially for some of the mills you have here in Maine that are multiple generations. Yeah. And, um, but uh, yeah, so we started by Peter Kroll and Arthur Durgan um, in 1976. And now Peter Kroll's two sons own and run the company now, Peter and Ben Kroll. Nice. Second yeah. generation. Yep. Oh. And most of your material comes from New Hampshire area? 
yeah, you know, our logs come mostly within a hundred miles, um, it, for trucking reasons and that sort of thing. Uh, mostly from Southern New Hampshire, Vermont, a little bit upstate New York. We get down south as far as Massachusetts, Rhode Island, but for the most part, most of them are coming within really 50 miles of the mill. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful Eastern White Pine. Exactly. Yes. You ever see a truck coming up, like when you're down in Portland, the big city or down Southern Maine, and I see a truck coming north with logs, and for a minute, I'm like, that doesn't make sense, but you forget there's just so much forest land everywhere, I mean, yeah. up and down the eastern seaboard. Exactly. I mean, you really start looking around at the byproducts of wood trucks going down the road, whether it's byproducts with, with chips going somewhere, or, or sawdust, or or finished lumber, or log, It's it's especially here in Maine, I mean, you guys are the, the peak of it, it's, it's, it's just a huge industry here in New England as a whole. Yeah. And you, yeah, it's funny you say Southern New Hampshire, I don't really think Southern New Hampshire has a heavily forested area but it you know well you get down into the keen area Limburg, right, 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 right. there's some there's some tracks of some beautiful wilderness country out there you know it's it's definitely not as as populated as getting around conquer manchester that sort of thing but even massachusetts we get we get we get uh log log loads from down there so until you get some experience you don't realize even a small acreage can be worth a lot of money yeah definitely especially right. that but those big old pine trees in it okay. we've had a couple of jobs where we found old like pretty old growth like the Kennebec land trust and west Gardner. like that was some of the oldest pines i've ever seen wow like around here you know like it was protected and, like you see some up north and it was amazing like i think i brought my nephews out there and like check this out like right yeah you guys got more of that see i think new hampshire at one point was almost completely deforested you know i mean we're more so than you guys were a little small definitely a lot smaller so we don't have we have some of those i think they've found a you know king's broad in a couple of trees here or yeah. there but we don't have as much of that as you guys probably do well, you see pictures around here, though, around the turn of the 19th century, and it's all, all deforested, right? Like around Cobbacy Lake and stuff, and it's amazing how fast it's come back. Exactly. It's very sustainable, absolutely. Yeah. And so you said you guys it, you focus mainly or only on the five-quarter? Four-quarter. Four so, quarter. Four yeah, quarter. so we only saw eastern white pine. So we're full sawmill, planer mill operation, um, and we're strictly making one-inch thick boards at, at this time. We, we've done some five quarter in the past and things like that, but we're really set up. We've kind of grown to large scale production, you know, so we're, we're really trying to run large scale production that kind of geared the mill towards that, that one inch thick board, you know, three through 12 inches wide and mostly your ship laps, your barn siding, your interior paneling, and, and really a lot of the products you guys use on, on a daily basis in your line of work in the cabin. So um, that's sort of our, our bread and butter there. We also do some pre-finished products. We have a, a, a paint operation, a UV coating line that we do some pre-finished work, um, six and eight inch tongue groove paneling, and we'll put a UV coated product uh, paint finish on that. So that's what we just got a delivery of, correct? Yeah, we we tried uh, with some five inch. We were trying to yeah. do something with some yeah, narrow yeah, lumber. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's something that you know we were Chase and I were talking at the the Nelma conference that yeah. it's definitely a wider that's the thing right now is eight inch eight inch yeah. wider boards is the is i'm sure you see it as well is that is the thing right now it's the theme and you know four or five years ago it was probably more of a six inch world you know it's always been kind of six and eight maybe the six was a little more popular and now it's kind of morphed into eight inch is just just going nuts um yeah. and you know so for a guy like me that sells both i'm like geez how could, you know what's going on with six inch every eight inch is just the thing right now you know and uh and i know we were starting to talk about five inch it's like it's even a little narrower but five inch isn't very common you know it's it's common you know it's more commonplace probably up in canada the maritimes uses it pretty regularly it's here it's in new england mills like me and other mills here in maine we make it some mills make it, some mills don't, but a lot of us make it, but you don't hear about it. You don't see right. it much. And and it's it's a great product. And actually, it could be a little discounted in comparison to some of the six. Um, but actually, I have a question for you guys on that, on the question of narrower lumber as as installers. You know, I, I hear, well, it takes longer to put the six inch up. So that's why the eight inch is more popular. What do you think there? I mean, if you were going to do a cabin, if you're going to do the walls of a cabin and you did eight inch for a six inch, what are you talking for a time difference? Well, Chase would look at price difference first, you know, so it does does the price, it, it, it's probably going to take a tiny bit longer, but if you do what you, like, our guys are fast with pine. Yeah, yes. I think it all depends on, I think, the grade and the quality, you know what I mean? Okay. Like, if we're, if we're putting on a number four or industrial eight inch, you know you're going to be fighting it. And, and you're going to have to wedge it. And, cut. and sometimes that fight takes more time, whereas, you know... 
if it's a five inch or something thinner, you know you're going to have more flex and it's going to snap together a lot easier. Sure. I, I was just thinking of season one, you bought a lift. Um, <laughs> and I never even knew this existed. Tongue and groove two by sixes or two by fours. Yeah. Yep. And you had like Dylan and I build a wall and we built one wall with that. And, and it took us like two days. Wow. You know, and like that's, we didn't know back then. You know, we, oh, the lumber was dirt cheap. Well, then you got to factor. Twisting and turning and somebody. Yeah. Yeah. You got to factor in. Yeah. But then you could also say five inch boards are going to be structurally more sound. Like... Yeah, right, 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 right. Well, I guess that's a good question for you. Like, do you find that is it easier or is it better quality with a five inch because there's going to be less knots? Or I mean, I know it's I know it's on a grade in a scale system, but yes. to, you know, to find a clear twelve inch board is going to be a lot more difficult than finding a clear five inch so does well that... it just we don't make a lot of the five inch i mean we for we're always looking to sell some of it but in comparison yeah. to the six right, eight, right, 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 nobody right. makes as much why is that but, is, it, is it because you want a one by six and then if not you want to go down to a one by four because everyone uses one by four yeah but, it, it comes down to like the machinery in the middle of how you're how you're making nice it enough. you know so if you're sawing the cans and the guys are sawing you're trying to saw down to eight inch or you're trying to saw down you see some of that nice nice um red knotted product that you could get some six and eight inch out of which is kind of what people look for the most um for that appearance grade pattern board tongue and groove with the five inch most is probably coming off an edger so it's probably after the fact that you're getting it off an edger no one's sawing it down to the five inch off a, a log can't side you know it's more coming off an edge product it's squeezing something out of a yep. side gotcha. clutch of a log gotcha. that you can get something out of and try to put off putting the waste and make some five inch um some mills don't do it they just go right to four or they do the six um but but a lot of us do um because you know we're making such you know we're large quality quantity mills so we're making a fair amount of something so you know i can get a, a half a truck or a truckload of that and it's not a problem on yeah. a handful of times a year and do it so we always have some to sell but it's just i mean there's some people that don't even know you know if there's five inch yeah there's five inch too you know it just doesn't get the love that the six and the eight inch does you know <laughs> so so i was like chase five, yeah, 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 yeah. five inch needs some help out show there. it the love you know? show it the love and, and be honest with you, it's a little discount it can be discounted out there because because it isn't as popular just for that reason yeah, but yeah. like you said when it goes premium six inch to five inch it's a proportionate scale yeah so it's really it's going to be about the same grade wise you know yeah. um from premium to premium apples to apples to apples you know you start going standard pre well then it's going sure, to change sure, like anything sure. else would but but uh you know it would definitely take a little longer to put up than eight inch yeah. but if you're going six inch this might not be a bad option but i, I mean you also see sometimes too i'm trying to look around here see where you would go eight inch Five inch, eight inch, I was just five thinking, inch, I like the range. There you go. Yeah. I love, you know, I do too. I do too. That's a great look. And, you know, it's tough. You just got to keep one row. I mean, it's not that hard, but when you go really fast. Like... <laughs> yeah. Or just, you know, random different widths too is nice. Yeah. You know, you see a lot more in floors, but it is a good way to uh, kind of break things up and have fun with it. Definitely. <laughs> Look, ask for five inch guys, right? Ask for five <laughs> inch, right? Especially if you look at something for dis, you know, for premium lumber, it, it could be significantly discounted versus a, a wider grade for sure. Well, so, and everyone asks us, how do you guys say do things you do? How do you save so much money? And really, it is, you know, our availability of eastern white pine and looking for deals and using what we have. You know, I don't think people realize. You know, you gotta. You might have to ask around. Like they're not gonna advertise some of the stuff, but if you ask around, just don't ask around here. Those are ideals. <laughs> absolutely, <laughs> but yeah, absolutely. Well, you, always stuff. You figure the average retail yard. I mean, they've got so many products. They get so many things. And if you do ask those questions, well, actually, I got this over here. I'm guilty of that on my side, selling it at a wholesale. It's like, you know, I've got this, I get this, I get this. And it's like, what do you, somebody asked me, you know, the really good guys that are buying it for me, the buyers are saying, hey, what about any of this? You got that developed? They know you're making it. And like, hey, you actually do. I just about have a load of that. And guess what? You got it because you asked, you know, <laughs> right? And and so that is, that's a good point, you know, asking. And sometimes these guys could find things, but it's easy to get in the rut of this is what we have this over here and to sell it. Get those um, blinders on. Yeah. Right. For sure. So as far as the um, pre-finished products, so that seems to be something else that's kind of becoming more and more popular. Absolutely. And I think, you know, a lot of people think about polyurethane, you know, the old oil-based polyurethane and how the pine would just, you know, darken up so much over the years. But it seems like with the new water-based and just the new ways of applying it, it doesn't seem to have that same effect. Right. Um, is this, I mean, is this a fairly new 
offer that you guys are doing? We've probably we're probably one of the first ones doing this really? in New England. Um, we started doing this probably a little more than fifteen years ago. Oh, wow. Um, and it's ours is a UV coated, so it's it's 100% VOC free. It's a two coat process. We put a lot of time sanding in between coats and before, and really get a good adhesion. Um, Can I see one of those? Yeah, and and that's a piece of that five inch I brought in. But yeah, that's, the, uh, that's beautiful. We do a few different colors, but it, this was a segment we saw a need for. Um, you can put a far superior paint job on. Than, than you could produce in the field. And now as more more homeowners doing DIY or or even just, you know, just labor. I mean, you guys know I find people that work and do oh, it. gosh, yeah. It's just it's just time savers, you know. It, you can get this and you put it up. And and that's really one of the things we did with uh we started doing this with premium grade a while ago. And then we kind of it's been a, just probably the fastest segment of our products. Um so we invested in the second oven and now we can do it all in one pass. And we started coating a lot of standard grade lumber and we kind of marketed that different called it dun pine. So really just cause it is, it's you done. know, let's like get a list. D O N E, it's done. Done is better than perfect. <laughs> let's uh, let's get a second. Let's get a, a less expensive version of this. Yeah, for, yeah. You know, and and use the standard grade. It's a little more rustic. People are asking for it, and um, it just gives them a less expensive pre finish option, and they can put it up. You know, a homeowner can put it up, or a, it's quicker for somebody in your field to put it up. It's ready to go, and it's done. So. Put up on I the like walls it. and it's done. So we just kept it simple. I had that idea kicking around my head for a couple of years. <laughs> and if we ever do something with the standard, and sure enough, we got there. So but, it's working well. That, but that's another area I was just thinking, like, until you actually sit down and price it out, it's more money up front. And people, you, you see that sticker shock. But when you think about it, you don't have to get all the stuff out. I mean, in the long run, it, it if it's not the same, it could be a little bit less. Right. You know, but you have to do that math. You have to do it enough. Right. Like, there's something to be said to be putting up the boards, throwing some trim on, and done. Clean it up. Not ha cleaning, having a poly painter come over, having a poly. It. And I, yeah, and I can tell you this finish is going to be far Wait. superior than anything, you know, once it's up, trying to get all the poly in the grooves and all that. Right. <laughs> right. So this, yeah, the board's 100% sealed. And yeah. it's... it's uh, it's done, ready to go. But now, uh, is this the enhanced line? This, the, that's the okay. enhanced. Yep, and that's a great above done. Yep, the, the enhanced is really. We did the enhance, and it was our premium grade. Yep. And then we started trying the standard grade, and you know, New England tends to be for us the more premium market, uh, premium grade. We sell standard and premium, but the premium does well here in New England and down the southeast part of the United States. We ship we ship all over the country, but mostly this side of the Mississippi, but we do a fair amount of business down the southeast part of the United States. That tends to be more of a standard market. Yeah, rust, more rustic. More though, rustic. Yeah. More in, And they, it's just harder sell to do it the pre-finish. We started the standard down there, just couldn't get it going, but the price point was so much more. And I, I think they had a better labor market down there. I think they could do it. They had their kind of ways of doing it. Yep. And it just was tough breaking that barrier with the pre-finish, you know, getting it to try. The upfront price tag was... And so we started doing the standard grade. And what we started doing was we, we were just coating the the front of the board so we actually put a plate in there and we're not coating the back so this is a it's a uv coat it's it's an expensive paint job but could we you know most people probably aren't coating the back anyway these guys are coating it they're buying 12 inch tongue and groove or they're putting it up down yeah. there and they just need these these projects done paint so, three sides boys <laughs> so we started doing the standard grade and we were gonna argue, let's let's what if we don't coat the back we had that capability of kind of stopping so we get in the groove get on the tongue but save the paint on the back which on the course of a run for us added up to some serious sure, savings sure. of paint the insulation is not going to care if we pass that on and get that price point now it started moving and now we've got some traction down south of this with and they're using it once they try it like geez that job went pretty quick we're getting more of that stuff and you just yeah and it works well. So we've got some traction with that down in the southeast with the standard grade and um and the dun pine, it's working well down there. Yeah. Nice. You know, we do love flipping these around too. Oh yeah, sure, sure. But I mean, yeah, why do you, why waste the money? So I I, I battle that a little bit because it really is a one sided product oh, from yeah. us. Oh yeah, no, we, and, we know that. And so well, some people might sell it. I mean, you know, if you buy a center bead board, it's got that V group on the back, and that's a standard product, you know. But for us, for for the coating purposes, we right. can only really 
we put all that fancy sander, all the attention, 90% of those yeah, heads you wouldn't on want, that. You wouldn't want to flip and that. We almost intentionally, this actually has a pretty good looking back, but they don't always. And we almost somewhat try to, because we battle that, because it's a different grade on the back yeah. of the board. People don't necessarily yeah. realize you're really grading one phase of the board. So if you, geez, what's, that's ugly. We'll flip it over. That was the back, you know, because you can have a little uglier side there and that's what it is so to control that we kind of do it one-sided yeah. um but we do both the edge and center beating there before but just order which one you want yeah. and we'll make sure that's the one that get you what you what you need you do edge and center bead as well we do nice. yep we coat the edge and center bead we do a wp4 we just started doing a nickel gap nickel gap wp4 that's the v groove that's gotcha. sorry sorry no 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 yeah, that's <laughs> the that's the uh the other term for it more commonly it's the v groove v yeah. match um and then we do the um, nickel gap, nickel said, gap yeah, which is one, one of our newer patterns we're doing. Mostly eight inch on that, and that's been a big hit. We, we, Ash and I just built our house what three years ago. And we had to have the dime gap. Yeah, and we bought. You no, know, it's beautiful. You know, we spent a lot of money on it, but now it's like I could have done that, but. No, I think you look back, but we bought it pre-finished and it was just done. You know, right. and like it still looks great to the to this to this day. And I, I could have done that and we but we still might not be in our house by now. Yeah. Right, right. It is pretty handy when yeah. it's all laid in there for you. Right. <laughs> yep. Now, what are the different finishes that this comes in? So we do it in four different colors. It's the same finish, it's the same gloss in, in every, but we we have four different Shades. Four different colors. So we do a clear natural white. We do an almond, which is slightly darker. It's really more the color of your walls in here. Yeah. It's almost that darker pine, like an almond. Good 30 year sun fade. And then we just started doing a gray as well, which is kind the of a, a kind of a whitewash. So they're all they're all sort of um you know, they all show the knot character through. Yep. They're not solid. So even the gray, you can still, the, the knots still have that reddish to it. And it's kind of almost that barn board look gray, which is co coming out pretty nice. And this is all stuff you can find on your website? Yeah, we sell on our website. We sell it through wholesale distributors around the country. And what is the website? It's Durgan, com with the N spelled out. Yep. Nice. Cool. Yeah. Excellent. So I've got a technical question. Um, Say you face nail that. Yeah. What's the best way to, you know, if you want to hide the nails? You know, I guess we would really suggest blind nailing it is really what we would probably suggest. Um, oh, for sure. For sure. But yeah. If, if someone face nailed it. <laughs> Um, I, you know, I get that we do sell like a touch up. We have like a paint that you could use to kind of yeah. tint it and touch it up, you know, for the clear, really clear poly could do something and, um, but use a fine, use a fine nail and do it. I would really recommend, I would blind <laughs> nail it. Yeah. It's, it's the, it's, you know, I, I get asked that question. I have, I get, but like, you know, those, um, little trick pencils that they, I mean, could you, you know, something like that is fine to use with it. Yeah. I mean, wood putties whatever, are fine. Whatever There's matches. Nothing... I mean, it's really up to you at that point. Um, yeah. it, it's a pine board. We're just, you know, at the end of the day, if you polyed it and did it, this is just, it's very comparable. It's just done in a different way. Yeah. You know, people are like, what paint did you use? Um, and it's like, well, our paint's more of an industrial coating. Like our paint, it won't dry. Just if you just paint it on a board and set it there, it'd never dry. Right. It has to go through like a UV light yeah. machine that we have. Yeah, I mean, that's hard. The board. So it's our, our paint, our coating is really on the surface mm -hmm. of the board, whereas your traditional coatings are penetrating in. Gotcha. gotcha. So that's kind of the difference. But but it, once it's on there, you really have a hard time telling. Yeah. You know, but, I mean, I mean, it's, really, it's, it's the sheen. You know, this is a gloss. Sheen, you can if feel you have it. a gloss polyurethane to, t you know, it's going to match up. Yeah, as far as color wise right. and what you did would be the same, you yeah. know, if you were going to putty it or do something, I guess. But I, I would probably blind nail it just to not see them. Sure. Yeah. A little light sand in a little coat of something. It's amazing. Everyone has differences. Though. Some people love the boards behind us that, you know, have sit with no protection and weather. Some people want to get those right. polyed up, want that clear look. <laughs> You know, something and, for everybody. And now I get a lot of I get a lot of asks for it's the the solid. You know, they want pine, but they want they want the the clear selects and they want the they want the tongue and groove V match look, but they want to paint it solid white or paint it a solid color, and but they don't want the knots to come through. And that's like the big, oh, God. you know. Yeah. And so we we have it. We do the kind of more the translucent coatings, but that's a that's a popular thing. There's a lot of that going on right now. I mean, a lot of for, for the select lumber that we've produced over the years was typically, you know, surface four sides for trim work and soffits and that sort of thing. But we are we are 
putting a tongue and groove on a ton of selects these days, which is just something that's not you used to do it once or twice a year. And now it's far more commonplace. And I think it's that people doing those accent walls, people doing those. I think you guys have been good proponents of that as far as, you know, here you're in kind of pine country and you're putting it up, but you're also really showing the, the world what, what it looks like on the walls. And, and I think, you know, programs like yours are really emphasizing You got to break that. it up like, a little bit. You can yeah. have that warm look, whether you sure. have that cityscape and apartment or that Brooklyn apartment, you could put an accent wall in and warm up that room yeah. and, and it looks great. And that's been a, a huge proponent, I think, for, uh, for especially for board manufacturers. So we think we'll, we'll keep doing it. <laughs> sheet, yeah. Sheetrock manufacturers hate us, but whatever. <laughs> I don't see sheetrock trees in Maine. <laughs> right. No, probably not. <laughs> so does the... The mill kind of what drives the trends in what the mill produces? Is it kind of, you know, what you have for material that comes through? Or, you know, if somebody says we need a load of, you know, we need a delivery of this much or. Sure. You know, it's it's really it's it's what people are buying drives it. I would say it's driven right from the ground up. You know, for us, we're 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 set up a little differently than your average mill. We we mill almost everything to order. Oh. Whereas a lot of mills might have a couple million feet of lumber on the ground and they're they're filling yeah. trucks from that. You know, for me, if someone orders a truckload of lumber, we run it a couple of weeks. We're gonna if they want to change the pattern, if I haven't run it yet, it's not a problem. Gotcha. You know, we run it to order, so it, it's. You have the nickel gaps and things that are somewhat new creeping in, but there's the main stays, the edge and center bead and the V groove that they stay, they don't creep in that much. They're just kind of, they're just institutions. I think there's just, it's just, so it doesn't, uh, it, but it really w will do what people need us to do. You know, really what, what knives we're setting on the machine is, is really an afterthought. Yep. It's just what, it, what you need to do, what the orders are telling you. So the trends are, are really developed from the ground up. And I'm, I'm sure some of that could be from, from architects. Some of that could be from just homeowners preferences. Someone could be builders pushing someone in some way, what they've been exposed to, what they see. Um, but we've seen that where, you know, you have trends like the nickel gap has has grown but it hasn't grown as quick as we thought it might have like three or four years ago and it's like geez why isn't well that's just not what's coming that's not what they're ordering you know they order some of that but the the older some of the more traditional patterns still outnumber the the newer things by far it takes a while it's mm -hmm. it takes a while to creep in i'd say especially not a bad thing no yeah it works <laughs> right right <laughs> Great. Well, we have a few fan questions for you that Maggie's going to read to you. All right. I know. I was looking at those a little bit. I think he, 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 we... he touched upon a couple of them. No, I, I, I didn't even look. But there's some good questions in there. <laughs> okay. You're not Are supposed to peek. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Ready. <laughs> I'm ready. All right. This one is from Diane Jackson. Can you use Eastern white pine in any situation or are there times you need a harder or softer wood? Good question. Okay. Yeah, this is a good question. You know, I, I think, you know, all species would have their, the things they're good at, you know, um, you know, hardwoods and oaks and things like that are, are you know, are, are more conditioned to, to some things and Eastern white pine is more of a softer texture wood. Um, if you go from pine species to pine species, they're a little more comparable against themselves. Um, people tend to like the Easter white pine because it, it has that nice soft texture. It has that nice red and black knotted look. It kind of has the a really nice mix of them all. So we tend to be more for appearance grade and that sort of thing than, you know, Southern yellow is a little more of a sturdier, it's a little more of a harder wood than, than Easter white. So that one tends to be used for flooring more than us. Um, you know, if you have dogs or something, that would be a concern for Easter white pine floors because it's softer, you know? Right. Um, but you're not going to make a basketball court out of Eastern white. Pine. Yeah. But, but how many cabins do you guys see with Eastern white pine floors? People do it every day. <laughs> we love it. It works. Yeah. It's know, character. So, well, that's just it. Yes. As it, long as you're aware of it. And right. You know, like it's, your dog's, it's, it's you're going to see scrapes, it's gonna, but it's going to look Yeah. Good. And it can get its own kind of patina to it Absolute, in that way, which, which people like. I mean, some people just go for that and like, this is it. We know it. We want it, you yeah. know? And so there's that, but there's definitely all have their, their, um, their, 
I guess their strengths and weaknesses. Um, for ours, it's the you know the appearance grade, but then you can have pine that's structural too, and like spruce pine fir can be used in that sort of more dimensional capacity as well. But um, so it, it definitely, I think it depends on the application. You know, it's it's one thing about it; it will wood tends to be you know, what environment it grew in, it tends to have those traits. Yeah. And one thing I think Eastern white pine has going for it is it grows here in New England where we're known for our, our harshest our weather mm-hmm. changes, our harsh climates. And, you know, we have four seasons, so it sees it all. So Eastern white pine typically can hold up well when you take it other places, which some other species of wood can't say that, you know, you start taking Southern species North and they may not hold up so well, but you take ours South and it can hold up pretty. So it, it depends for sure. Um, tough to say unless without a specific application, I guess. People argue that's on the floor thing, but again, it's a price point and it, it works. Yeah. And I mean, I, I love going to camp that's 100 years old, and that, that floor was probably pine, and then at maybe 30 years ago, they put some paint on it, and then the paints get better. Right. And now you can pour water on that. You can mop that floor. Like It's true. It really it really is. Right. Yeah. Good question, Diane. All right. Next question from Teresa Dorr. Is your wood only available in the Northeast? Um, so we do ship... We ship it pretty far. Mostly, it really comes down to um, shipping costs is how far it goes. You know, typically tends to be up and down the eastern seaboard. We sh- Some of it goes out to Detroit, Texas. But then you start this ponderosa pine out there, which is just another pine species. So you start getting to the point where, well, I could get this cheaper here at home or ship that across the country. And that's really where it starts. But some people just, they want this mm-hmm. and they want to ship it. And, and, you know, we've had some hit California before. So it, it doesn't, if, if they really want it, they can get it. So, um, and then we ship some, we ship some around the world, you know, China, Pakistan, um, they'll make moldings and things like that. And they make intricate doors and windows and they do things like that with it there. So it goes all over the place. That's um, amazing. Holds up well. We've heard that from other places, the finger joint, the sun on the shorts. and Yeah, right. Maine lumber, New England lumber going all over the world. That's right. New England lumber. So I've got another question. Is, <laughs> do the different pine species you know, is there a lot of competition between ponderosa pine and eastern white pine? Yeah, I mean, I, I think to some extent. I mean, I think we've got we've got our niches, you yeah. know. And again, a part part of it's shipping. Um, fortunately, we hold up well against some of the other ones, just from the. We're, I think we're probably if you ask people and you you took a poll of the. We're, People think we're a little bit more of a prettier species with Easter yeah, white pine, yeah. um, have that softer texture. Um, the ponderosa pine can tend to be a little bit more of a smaller black knotted. It might, they have the lengths on us, you know, yeah. for us, they can gotcha. get, you can get all 12 gotcha. foot, you get all 16 foot. That's a little tougher for an Easter yeah. white pine mill. The tr- you know, we don't have the quantity of trees right. that they do to, so it's a little more of a niche species. So huh. we've got some limitations there, yeah. um, but people like the look of it. So... We we hold up pretty well, yeah. Um, in comparison, and what's the R one radiata? Radiata. What is that? Is that what it is? Yeah, radi. Yeah, that's more of a. Yeah, that's a like an Asian. Oh, it is. Well, it's a it's a uh, it's a different kind of a it, the R word. It, it, it. Yeah, that's the one you could you could get some problems with that one a little bit with. Um, it, it depends on what they when they finger join it and you see that's when you see as the. Yep. Some yep. issues there, but. Um, yeah. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> On that note. <laughs> Any more questions? Um, nope. Oh. <laughs> we'll stick with our Eastern White Pine. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So, I mean, obviously, Eastern White Pine is our favorite. And thank you for the donation. Yeah. That you'll see that in an upcoming episode. Great. I don't want to give away too much. Okay. All right. But, you know, again, we're the beauty of it, it goes on and five inch. So uh yeah. great. Yeah, don't yeah, don't forget ask your lumber yard you know you can get stuff out there and yeah. don't be afraid to ask questions and get the good stuff. Right. Yeah. Well thank you, Alex. Well yeah. thank you guys, appreciate it. Yeah, Thanks so, for joining us. Yeah, so stick around on um, we're gonna take a field trip down to the woodshed and see what's going on down there today. Exciting. All right. You're welcome to join us, Alex, if you want. <laughs> I will. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.
Oh, yeah. That's guys movie vibes. That's the movie vibes. This is the woodshed. It's located at Royal yeah. Headquarters in Manchester, Maine. Open every day. Uh, winter hours right now are 11 to 7. On the weekends, 8. Maybe a little bit after. But there's always um, people here having a good time. Some familiar faces. Always familiar faces to us. Um, food's great. So stop by and say hi. And you might catch one of us. Love the Moxies. And, uh... They have, look, they got uh, festive holiday whoopie pies and um, some peanut butter whoopie pies and some, oh, another festival. Hi. I, 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 I think I like the whoopie pies, but they got, yeah, but the Moxies are Moxie, you know. You can't argue that. What's Moxie for anybody outside of me? It's, um... Locally produced beverage that's got an interesting flavor, <laughs> and it's nothing else tastes like moxie. Hey Mike, what's your favorite thing about the woodshed? Here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at his black and that they named him the Woodshed Mug Club Member of the Year. Yeah, I mean, oh, yes. that, that most makes sense, right? Consumed <laughs> right here. That makes 2022, sense. most beers consumed at the woodshed. One more. Good job, Mike. Like, Coming in here is just great. You know, the people that come in to visit us and hang out. Um, the beverage selection, uh, we've got just enough of everything to um, fill your taste buds. But yeah, the sandwiches are, are excellent. The staff is amazing. And again, it's just the people that come in here to hang out with us. It's, it's a fun little spot. That I snowmobile the trail comes in right there in the parking lot, folks. Yeah. Ride those snowmobiles in here all winter long. As long as we get snow. And just want to go to our social media to keep up to date on events, specials, and all that good stuff. I'm coming here because of the people I've met and the relationships I've grown from meeting people here. And we get together two, three times a week, every week, and have some laughs and a couple beers and have a good time. And don't forget your Woodshed gift card for those holiday stocking stuffers. What's your favorite thing about the Woodshed? Uh, cold beers, family, just a great place to hang out. And the food. <laughs> Alright everybody, let's go back to the podcast. We got things to do. Oh, I guess right. she's talking a lot. See you guys. Bye. 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 I got plenty of cheese. <laughs> All right. Field trip. That was fun. That was. We'll definitely check back in and uh, see who's a, who's a regular. <laughs> yeah, place your bets now, okay? Place your bets. You met some of them. <laughs> it's always cozy down there, though, in the Christmas spirit and having yeah, fun. It is. Yeah, some nights have uh, fires outside and wind permitted. <laughs> wind permitted. We see some snow. It'll change everything. It'll come. It's true. It's saving us right now, so I'm fine. No yeah. snow for two more weeks. Right. Never Christmas. Nope. Right. I disagree. Maggie needs snow. Snow. I need snow tomorrow. You could have cold weather. No, I need snow. Okay. I think it's just snow above Route 2, and that's it. All the time. Be All you want for Christmas is snow? Nope. That's not what I said. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'll do a snow dance after this. Okay, good. We are on to questions from the fans for Ryan. And Chase. And Chase. <laughs> <laughs> nice try. Okay, but the first one is actually for Ryan. <laughs> See, oh, wish I, I may have peeked ahead. <laughs> no looking. All right. Aaron Hewitt um, says, Ryan, can I get a stack rank top five on current jam bands? Oh, God. All right. Neighbor, Billy, Goose, Fish, Panic, String cheese. Well, there's six there, so someone's going to get the short end of the stick. This is not easy. I don't want to offend anybody. Ugh. They're not listening. So, so, so who's neighbor? Neighbor is our friend Ricky James. Neighbor played here last year. Uh, Ricky James plays the keys. They're a very up-and-coming band. But they're a jam band? Uh, they're a jam band, and they graced our that, stage. What does that mean? Jam band means like they sing, but it's not always just singing. Like They 
They a lot, lot of instrumental. Yeah, but they noodle out and I just go out there. Noodle and... out. <laughs> All right. All right. That, Get back a... to the ranking. No, that's they No, say. I want to know more. Billy. Bill, Billy Strings. Who's Goose? Uh, um, Goose is a new band. These these bunch of young guys, they are rising to the top as well. They just toured with Trey from Fish, and they were just on the Jimmy Fallon show. So I read an interesting thing about Goose during the pandemic. They're promoters or they kind of promoted within and they were very technologically savvy so they use the internet and all this stuff and really grew during the pandemic we know fish we know fish panic widespread panic is uh pain of jake's favorite band from right yes South. of course i mean people love widespread panic fans are probably the most rabid fans we know i would agree with that yeah i feel bad because um widespread panic is still big in the south they're still yeah. together yeah still, oh, playing. Yeah, still, yeah still playing um and someone watched the show Really? Uh, I swear to God. <laughs> we went out to Andrew Ryan's 50th birthday party, and we hung out with um, Guy Lopez and his wife, and yeah. he manages Wise for Panic and said that they really liked the show. And I felt bad because I don't really know their music a lot because they're a Southern band, but I'm going to wear a Wise for Panic shirt this year. Well, won't that <laughs> and then, make Jack, Jake happy? It'll make Jake so happy. And then String Cheese Incident. They're a Colorado band. They've been around forever. I've seen String Cheese. Yeah. And out West. In String Cheese Defense, if they don't make my list, they were my band when I, when Fish took a break. I saw a bunch of them. But are they still playing still, as well? Yeah, still playing as well. They had the frisbee stickers, right? Yeah, oh, yeah, and uh, the With, hula hoopers. Oh, hula hoopers. That's what it was. Yeah, crossing, crossing the road. Yeah. See, I see. Yeah, that was an old school jammer. It's kind of hard. So, to, yeah, when you live in a ski town in Colorado. <laughs> I gotta go. Billy Strings number one these days, just because we've had so much fun falling around. Ash and I just saw him <laughs> in Norway <laughs> and Denmark. And it's just, I just like the scene. It's young. He just a young young kid just having a good time. Number two, I, God, I can't. I, I see the neighbor of Fish. I, I love Fish, but I've just done, I've been to so many hundreds of shows. And maybe I'm over the crowd, something. Maybe some of this factor is not the, this has nothing to do with the quality of music. No, no, that. no, 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 no. It's just no, my no, life no, no, right no, no, now. No, no. Don't, don't rationalize or make excuses. All right. Billy Wan. Fish two. Fish two? Fish two, neighbor three, and neighbor's coming up. I don't really know Goose, but I'm putting so much time into Billy. I don't want to put time into neighbor that Goose, I just, I don't think I'm ever going to give them the time. And then Panic's going to be number five because I don't know them, but I know they like the show, so they're up and they're on it. And then, oh God, Fish, ah, I think I'm going to keep Goose off. Is there I gotta, anyone that's not on the list that you would put on there? No. I mean, I, I do love my Timmy Sullivan main dead project, but he's on my personal list. And I think Billy Fish slash neighbor. Why don't we leave String that? cheese, yeah. goose, and panic. There you go. <laughs> there you go. They're all good. This, that, but You heard it the, here. The moral of this question first. is a lot of good jam bands right now. So, I agree. Yeah, great question. Flakes put me on the spot, buddy. There we go. Yeah, and I gotta say, we had neighbor on our stage before they got big, so that makes me very proud. Nice. Well, and Ricky has another band too. Oh yeah, Pink Talking Fish. Yeah, mm -hmm. maybe we can get them sometime. They're bigger than neighbor. Damn, they're bigger. That means they're bigger than the woodshed. But give us a couple of years, you never know. Great. All right. It changed their size, like Maggie. I'm no, never, we're out. We're never out, we're, been more no, confused in my life. We're out of the music scene. Oh, go to college, and you and I will get. We're gonna have a lot more in college. I, common when you I get back from college. I pray that is not true. It's true. We're gonna be I buddies. I pray. <laughs> that's my like one wish in life is that that's never Stop true. It. No. All right. Next question. Maggie. <laughs> All right. Next question. Um, Wendy. Ooh. Raju. Rajat. 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 Why no screen in Windows or insulation? That's a common question and a good question. It is. And most of the times, no screens and windows because they blur the view for the TV. TV. You know, if you're inside looking out, it kind of screens the view. If you're outside, you don't get to see the glass or the grills or whatever. But nine times out of ten, the windows are, the screens are just tucked into a closet or under a bed or just set off to the side. Or Hammond's, our buddy Dennis hasn't sent them yet, but they're always coming. Yeah. 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 But they're always there. Um, insulation that really is camp dependent on whether or not the budget allows for it or if they want it if or if they want it most camps are two season it's it's amazing what people want 
So like just talking about like the wood earlier, like some people want this look, that look. Some people just want a camp that they're gonna go through in the summer that look. Some people want frame as finish. Yeah. Or the budget, like I said, the budget doesn't allow for it. A good example was the McQuaid camp out on in Fayette on Davis Pond. You know, we had enough money to get the frame finished and down the road they can insulate it and start closing in walls as they have the funds for it. We do we do that all the time. Yeah, and I, we leave them in a really good spot. Yeah, and even the ones we sheath, if it's a little more budget, they don't want to insulate. Down the road, they could blow in insulation. It's a little more work, but they're yep. always in a good spot where we leave them. Yep. And you know, again, if you're not using the camp a lot, and there's insulation, it's going to be a great home for critters. I mean, spray foam obviously seals in a lot, but you know, again, you don't want critters moving in when you're not there and i don't know if people don't know this but a lot of people don't like maine in the winter they're not they, they don't love it like we do i'm just saying it is i don't know what's wrong with those people but there's a few people out there but i'm here from memorial day to columbus uh to indigenous people's day yes so yeah truth can't tell you what they're thinking <laughs> who would who would think all right last question from Robin Trueblood. Since you are working on several camps simultaneously, have you had to expand your team? Absolutely. Season one, it was the six of us, seven of us. There was like eight. We had it, Dylan and Spicer a little bit. Yeah, Justin was always Justin, there. Justin, yeah. But we've added on. Yeah, I, height of summer, you know. There's 20. 20. And then Carpenters we have, working. And then with we have us. people running. Your uncle Lee's helping us. I'm sending my dad's yeah. around to get stuff. I mean, we're bringing screens out to Wild Bill to be painted. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we've got a huge team. Doug, yeah, and that doesn't include the subcontractors yeah. at all. We have a bunch. Francis, his team, Jason, you know, electricians, plumbers, excavators, and yeah. Then the, yeah, the Ashes team. Like, there's a, it takes a lot of people. Especially like the, you know, as we've gotten bigger, the quality gets better. And like all the budgets are getting bigger. That's why we we like a little thirty, forty thousand budget. We can find them these days. It's true. Keep it simple. Keep it simple. Keep it small, and yeah, have fun with it. But yes, there's a whole team that goes along with us. Whole team. To, to think people thought it was us for a long time, like it's. I mean, we it's we've come a long ways. Yeah, no, I mean. And, and it's been good growth. Yeah, we've got Christy, who keeps us financially on the right track. She, yeah, you know, any HI, you name it, she does it all. All right. Um, yeah, it's a huge team. Well, yeah, that's just a big thanks to everyone, though. Keep sticking with us and watching the show and, you know, the podcast and stuff like yep. that. And, like, yep. it's am amazing. Jen shared a pitch the, the other day about two years ago, and it was Gabe and Melissa with the old food truck in the parking lot. And she's like, two years ago, and I think – what we've done in two years like it's go 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 and it's just amazing it's amazing we couldn't do it by ourselves yes all of it any yeah really any of it yeah yeah jen cole isadora yeah it goes on yeah and on. yes yes there's a yeah and then that doesn't even get into production side of things yeah. producer of this amazing podcast yes. thanks you're all good how many production people were there when you started versus now same amount oh was the same we've always been efficient yeah yeah, so same. Two main cameras, audio guy, couple assistants. Producer. Producer. Yep. But yeah, everyone's more efficient now. You know, yeah. like and some of them are still still with us. Still with us from the beginning. You know, we we've done some we've been on some bigger sets the last year. You know, we did some commercial work, we did some stuff for Magnolia. Yeah. And I think we were Let's get back to a little TV show. This is great. Seriously, right? Like all that stuff. Like you saw that. We did. Yeah. So we did thing. a commercial this summer. Oh, no. It was for the Magnolia Network to to help promote the show and all. I guess. Right. The dish one was first. That the dish one, one was, was like, crazy. Really over the top. The dish one was great. <laughs> yeah. But the Magnolia one was, was pretty, pretty over the top. Too. That was funny. I mean, it was. They brought in bathrooms they brought in caterers know, caterers oh, the food was so good it was but there's no way we would have made it to sustain that no. yeah like there's no way i'm I mean, glad it was I... an eight hour day and there were people popping out of the woods that i hadn't seen all day there was so many yeah 
I'm glad. I'm grateful to see that though, because it makes us realize how what we have and how lucky we are. Like we have a great little thing. It's not over the top. Yeah. <laughs> they haven't made us do hair and makeup yet. Yeah. Which we did have to get for the commercial. Yep. That was horrible, Maggie. <laughs> I'm sure it was really hard for you. <laughs> <laughs> oh god all right well thanks for the questions <laughs> keep them coming and we are on to so you think you know main trivia last week's right. was the theological seminary um no, it was never specified what type of seminary oh oh i don't know what that means i don't really i did google what a seminary is and now i've probably forgotten all right what is the name of the what was the name of the second oldest seminary in America? The only one I know of is the Bang Bangor Theological Seminary, right? I was thinking Pet Cemetery, Stephen King. I was <laughs> on the same planet. <laughs> That's correct. Yes. You know me as good as your partner, guys. See? I can think Pet Cemetery, and he nails it. <laughs> That's a tough one. See, yeah, that, that's the only one. I keep thinking it about the monks no in longer, Greece. It isn't. No longer no. in. Accepting students. Mm. We went to a, no, that, that that was a monastery. We but it's, but uh, that's what I thought of, yeah. monastery seminary. But that was wild, yeah. huh? Yeah. All the doors were open. We went in, lit candles, and like they would. Yeah, it was fascinating. It was. Greece is a yeah very fascinating place. Yeah. All right. All right. On now to this week's question. question. This isn't Greece trivia. In colonial days, Kennebunkport was known as what? What? Where the Indian head of the Indian tribes lived in the summer. Nope. Kennebunkport. A, it's a it got a name. Kennebunkport. A name. Is that still part of Mass? I don't know. It, is, it doesn't tell it me. It is now. New Boston. <laughs> <laughs> well, right. if you know the answer to that, please send your answer to podcast at maincabinmasters dot com. And if you were the first one with the correct answer, you might just get a prize from us. That's right. The name of Kennebunkport in colonial times. Yeah. How would anyone yeah. from a, how would anyone know that? So that's the trick. Okay. All right. Do your research. Yes. But we do want to hear from you. You know, if you're if you're our biggest fan or you love the show, send an email with your name, phone number, and a photo. Why you think you're the biggest fan, or you know somebody, or if you know somebody who's the biggest fan, reach out and you know. We could uh, <laughs> might surprise them, give them a call, give you a call. You never know. That'd be fun. And we always are looking for project pointers. If you have questions about your cabin or just a building question in general or you know, even a question about Maine, let us know. Podcast at MainCabinMasters.com. And we also want to, again, thank our sponsors, Nelma, Hammond Lumber Company, Hero Media Network, Kennebec Savings Bank. Thanks to our guest, Alex, from Durgan & Kroll. And From the Woodshed, we'll be talking to you. From the Woodshed has been brought to you by Nelma. See the stamp? Trust the quality. Hammond Lumber, your building project partner. Kennebec Savings Bank, helping our local community save, thrive, and grow for over 150 years. And Hero Media Network, connecting small business with new customers. From the Woodshed is a production of Kennebec Cabin Company. See you next time.